that's Nick. And that's Joseph. And today we're here to talk about Chevalier, the, I believe, the third feature directed by Stephen Williams, which premiered at the 2022 Toronto International Film Festival. It is being released on April 21st, 2023, courtesy of Searchlight Pictures. Do I know Stephen's other films? Uh, no, and has worked in a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of television. Uh, and it was written by Stephanie Robinson, who's also from the world of television, uh, having written for the series Atlanta and What We Do in the Shadows. So it's interesting that they've come together to make this English language period piece set on the eve of the French Revolution about Joseph Boulogne de Chevalier de Saint-Georges. Uh, looking at your letterbox, I gathered you did not like this movie. I, no, I, I really didn't like this film. So, uh, and it's of course not to be confused with, uh, Maurice Chevalier or the Athena Rachel Sangari film of the same title from 2015, which I much preferred. Or a Chevrolet Cavalier. Mm -hmm. Anyway, <laughs> I'm going to read the basic synopsis. The rise and resurgence of Chevalier de saint Georges, a French Caribbean violinist and composer who rose to fame through his musical prodigy, but a complicated love life and the racism of the Ancien Regime leads to a falling out with Marie Antoinette and St. Georges realizes that things must change. saint Georges. Sure. So, the Chevalier is Joseph Boulogne. Mm -hmm. right? Chevalier is, uh, it's basically like the French term for knighthood. So he's black. Uh, his mother was a black slave and his father was the white slave master. Mm -hmm. from, so, from Guadeloupe. Mm -hmm. So he, his father considers him a bastard, but I guess feeling guilty, decides to drop off his son at this like fancy school where he can get a top-notch education. So then we see Joseph turn into Kelvin... Harrison Jr., who is a gifted musician. Composer. Uh, uh, what do you call it when you... Fencing. Yes. <laughs> He's an expert. Yes. The, Fencer. Uh, That's the word. Mm -hmm. uh, and he wins a fencing duel that turns out to be integral in, in the making of himself as a man because uh, this, this duel, which is supposedly supposed to be evidence of why uh, the... the parties that believe that slavery should still be in existence. He wins, and Marie Antoinette is in attendance and uh, grants him the title of Chevalier. And they become friends, and he asks her if he can be the new director of the opera. Yes, the Royal Opera House is in a state of decline, uh, and, he re and he is talented enough to realize that he could really make something of it. But she's like, wow, you're black, so that's not really going to fly. But what if we do this? There's someone else who wants the position. Why don't we have you both sort of come up with a, a piece, and then we can judge who's best. But the synopsis I read talks about his... Um, complicated love life so one is that he is having an affair with samara weaving's character uh, marie josephine and it's an affair because she's married mm -hmm. and she ends up getting pregnant mm -hmm. by joseph so that's a problem mm -hmm. because the husband of played by martin shokas yeah he kills that baby mm-hmm then Minnie Driver plays a performer in the opera. Uh, she's a fading opera diva known as La Guimar. And she keeps making like sexual advances to Joseph, the Chevalier, mm -hmm. and he rebuffs her. So now she's mad. Yes, she associates herself with his competition. This Because Marie Antoinette was Austrian, this fellow Austrian that uh, is up for the position. So Minnie Driver's character is one of the people who write a letter saying basically like, if you let this black man be the director of the opera house, we will not perform. So he ends up not getting that position. He does become a notable composer mm -hmm. in his own right. Mm -hmm. But you can finish the story. He becomes radicalized. He becomes radicalized for the cause, but partly because he doesn't get this position. And shortly after that is the murder of his son. Uh, and then he has a close friend that gets him involved. It, I was unclear about which political party he's affiliated with. Um, but of course, it leads up to 1789 and uh, the dissolution of 
uh, Marie Antoinette's reign, who of course is later arrested and um, fed to the guillotine. Uh, and then in the after credit sequences, we learn that he was uh, created the first black regiment during the uh, French Revolution. And also uh, of note, when Napoleon came to power in, I believe, 1802, uh, reinstated slavery and uh, actively prohibited uh, the uh, all of the works of Joseph Boulogne. So that's why a lot of his stuff is unavailable today. But he was a contemporary of people like Mozart. It opens at a concert where he crashes uh, uh, in on Mozart and upstages him. What did you like about this movie? Nothing, really. Uh, I, I just don't understand why... I, I understand the importance of recuperation, and there's a lot of really interesting elements about this person, but it is... I, I felt heavily sanitized and neutered, and it doesn't really need to go where where it should. Because uh, at first I was interested, like, oh, this is going to be this tale about, uh, you know, this person that has to ascend to the heights and be basically superhuman, only to become uh, a member of the very, a, a part of the very organization that would rather just have him killed. And, and the kind of amount of self-loathing that goes into that. Um, I would have much rather had him focus on, and she's brought up, his mother's played by Ronka uh, Adekolujo, who I thought was very striking on screen, but also kind of limited, who lived on this plantation until his father died. He doesn't receive any of his inheritance, but his mother shows up basically on his doorstep to live with him and forces him to encounter uh, a culture, his own culture, that he's never really had to deal with before. Also, which he doesn't feel like he's a part of. And also of interest are, are, of course, French laws at the time. There's, you know, class and race things going on. You can't marry outside of your class. He can't marry... If he marries a black woman, won't be in his class, he has to give up his title, and he it's illegal for him to marry a white woman, no matter what class he's in. So there are very interesting uh, things to explore, but I, I think it just bungles all of them. I, 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 I usually don't like when films that aren't supposed to be in English are. I think with fiction, you can have a little leeway and there's a suspension of disbelief, right? But when you're talking about an actual person, I think it's just automatically kind of disrespectful that... Because there's one scene where his mother is speaking her native tongue and he, Kelvin Harrison Jr. chastises her to say, like, we speak French here. But he says it in English. <laughs> yes, but clearly you don't. <laughs> I also think casting is off. Mini Driver is stunning. And... The, again, how the film is neutered is she uh, kind of talks around what I would assume is fetishistic language, but the film does never really dare go there. And he, of course, rebuffs her. Uh, but she she looks too good for this role, for this faded diva. We see him first being Marie Antoinette's good Judy uh, in her opera box making fun of this faded star. But it, it just doesn't fit. It's like Nicole Kidman in the remake of The Beguiled. It just doesn't fit that the male character wouldn't be attracted to somebody that looks that stunning, in my opinion. Uh, and if they're going to take such liberties, I much would have rather seen some perversity, I guess. I, I, maybe I wanted this to be like the Boris Vian novel, I Spit on Your Grave, where the white-passing black man decides to sully as many white women as he can in, in revenge against the system. And, and I, I wanted it to be like that. I do think Calvin Harrison gets one good freak-out sequence, but... I don't know, just everything else feels so wrong. Samara Weaving, who, whose Australian accent you can hear in the English, I think furthers the distraction. Um, but she has a cousin that writes novels and opera, and that woman's performance, everything involving her, she's the one that delivers the news of him, his child being murdered. She basically shows up at his doorstep and is like, uh, your kid was born, he was murdered, bye, uh, while he has this... Uh, this screaming episode that I feel is completely false to me. And then Marie Antoinette. We are, in the year that this ends, Joseph Ballone would have been in his mid-40s. And Marie Antoinette had a lot going on, including sick children and a, a whole country that hated her because they were starving in the streets. Uh, but Lucy Boynton playing her has to be the worst. Of course, Marie Antoinette wasn't even French, but Lucy Boynton playing her just, oh God. She has a line at one point early on in the film where she's like, what are you going to do when uh, the world is yours, Chevalier? Like, that's the kind of dialogue. I'd... And then at the end, the, he throws this benefit concert, you know, because he's already been disgraced, which actually isn't all really accurate, I was reading, either, because though he didn't get the job at the Royal Opera House, the Queen retreated and would have private performances with him 
because she liked him. Uh, when he throws this benefit concert, Martin Shokas, of all people, shows up to point a gun at his head like he's the Detroit police at an NWA concert, uh, devolves into the public saving him while they're all screaming egalite. It's just so corny and bad. I I can't say how much I really didn't like this film. For if you want a better represent representation of the kind of recuperation of this person caught between worlds, uh, I think Ama Asante's 2013 film Bell, starring Gugu and Batha Ra, does I think this is what Chevalier is trying to be and trying to give this historical figure, but it just doesn't. What would you give this film? <laughs> uh, one and a half. Anything else? No. Hit the thanks button. Listen to our podcast. Bye. <laughs>